Hey guys, Luke from MGN here. Today we're going to talk about Pokemon Unite. Um, it sucks. Oh, an actual review? Oh, okay. Um, look, Pokemon Unite wants your money and it wants it bad. It should come as no surprise that a game that's outsourced its development to Tencent it is packed with sort of hyper aggressive microtransaction opportunities absolutely everywhere. The Pokemon company has a pretty disgraceful history in using sort of its um, child centric IP to prey on young audiences with their mom and dad's credit card linked to their, you know, like Nintendo Switch account or their mobile device. They outsource pretty hollow mobile experiences with the face of Pikachu on the front um, just to rake in big bucks. You've got Pokemon Masters, Pokemon Quest. Pokemon Cafe, Pokemon Magic Card Jump, Pokemon Shuffle, the list goes on. Whilst Pokemon Unite is yet to have its mobile release, with the game first coming to Nintendo Switch before later releasing on smartphone devices, it appears that this is just going to be the next example on that list. Something that you will notice almost immediately when trying to play the game on Switch is that the game's menu looks and feels exactly like every other piece of crap App Store game. Being a mobile game in disguise, there is obviously more to my assessment of Pokemon Unite belonging on this list than just that. As is the case for most of these kind of games, specifically, specifically from this developer anyway, there are a multitude of in-game currencies, but Unite is actually special, you know, it's in a special case of its own because it has five currencies. The standard, I would say, is probably two for like a the similar game of this nature. The most generic ones that I can think of are like gold and diamonds, I guess. Typically, you earn gold so slowly that you cave in, you need to buy diamonds with real world money or currency through convenient in app purchases. Some games will mix this up, with a third currency being gated behind some sort of faux late game meta. But I would say that two is probably the more typical when it comes to this sort of predatory monetization method. But Unite having five is kind of wow. The five are Aos coins, and that's gained uh, by finishing matches. And that's not gold, all right? That's totally not gold. So don't even, don't even think that that's similar to gold. The next is gems, which are uh, gained through real world money. Um, and that's totally not diamonds, guys. So don't, don't think they're diamonds, all right? They're definitely not diamonds. The next is Aeon tickets, um, and they're gained through completing missions, uh, when they have events, or through the battle pass. Um, and they're totally not designed to get you to buy the battle pass and then spend your real world money leveling it up. So don't think that. The next is fashion tickets, gained through completing missions, when the game hosts events, or the battle pass. And that is also totally not designed to get you to buy the battle pass and spend your money leveling it up either. So don't think that. The next is hollow wear tickets, and that's completed the game through completing missions through events, or the battle pass. And that's also totally not designed to get you to buy the battle pass and spend your real world money leveling it up. So don't think that. Naturally, with this many currencies, there are a plethora of monetization methods at play. You can purchase Pokemon to play as in matches. You can buy the battle pass and level that up. You can get sort of loot box like pulls for items and clothes for your trainer. And perhaps the most egregious is that you can directly purchase pay to win items. That's great. I say it's egregious because Unite puts literally no effort whatsoever in disguising its pay to win economy at all. When you're a low level trainer, you have uh, pretty few item choices uh, and you have fewer slots to assign them to. As you play, you, you know, as your playtime increases, you'll open these options up. The issue here is that it sort of creates a, a divide between the player base that has reached that amount of playtime. One, those who have purchased gems to purchase tickets to purchase better items and level them up. And two, those who haven't or can't. If your items are not the highest level or tier available and you, you know you haven't been leveling them up with real world money applications, you're going to get left behind, you're going to lose, you're going to have less fun than people who do spend money. And you're either going to have to be forced to keep up with those players by spending your money, or you're going to have to quit Pokemon Unite. The issue here that is, if you've invested enough time to reach this point, you're likely going to want to continue playing Pokemon Unite. I know what you're thinking. 
Surely if the pay-to-win economy is so obvious, blatant and predatory, people would be furious and they wouldn't send a single cent. Well, the reason it works despite that is down to a few factors. The first one being that the game's target audience is children. Despite the complexity of MOBAs like Dota typically requiring a little bit of an older audience, the IP in the, at play here is Pokemon. Combine that with a sort of watered down version of the Battlegrounds game type, it means that the game caters really well to a young target audience of children. The game is free, it has Pikachu, and it's on their Nintendo. The second is that Unite deploys a three step currency. You can't buy these pay to win items with your cash, but you can buy them with tickets, which you buy with gems, which you buy with real world money. You get the idea. The packs that gems come in don't exactly convert into the amounts that you can buy tickets in, and so forth. Look, it's all designed to confuse and discourage the player from working out the exact monetary value of in-game items. Thus, Pokemon Unite creates its own economy, the meta inside matches is shaped around it, and the target audience has to accept this paradigm. And this is all a pretty tremendous shame for Pokemon fans hoping for more than this just a cash cow, they're actually hoping for a cool mobile. The mismanagement of the concept in handing it off to an outsourced developer to turn it into a mobile game mess, rather than a deep mobile experience featuring Pokemon, is not something the fans of the series will be terribly unfamiliar with. It does reinforce the knowledge that those that handle the direction of this series are pretty uninterested with the opinion or desire of their audience. Which is a shame, because this concept sort of had really cool potential. There's already a huge cast to work with, there are lots of abilities to work with, and a really large and diverse demographic. It's a really good recipe for building a new MOBA. Alas, the game was always sort of destined to be pretty simplified just by the fact it was never going to be released on PC, despite that being the best format to play the genre on. Nintendo want you to buy their new console more than they want to capitalize on the PC gaming market trend. It's for all these reasons put together that I really suggest you not give Pokemon Unite any of your money and I won't be spending a cent either. Well, unless they add Tyranitar, because that is one cool ass Pokemon.